What's going on guys? Welcome back to the shop. It's great to have you here. I know I took a little bit of a break recently, but I'm back and ready to make a bunch of cool videos for you guys. And I figured a great way to get started up again would be to redo my hydraulic press. So let's get started. All right, so I thought it would be good to give you guys a brief overview of some of the problems I've been having with this press. Um, I guess I could start off first with the I-beam. Um, even though it might seem like a pretty decent sized I-beam, for the amount of pressure that these cylinders um, put off, it's way too small. It twists, um, and it buckles, and it bends. Um, I know you guys probably don't see it a whole lot in the videos, but if I were to give you a full shot of the entire I-beam, you could see that every time the cylinder goes down and pushes against something that I'm forging, the entire beam buckles and, and bends like this. Um, the other problem I have is this cylinder, even though it's really strong and it's bending the I-beam, it's still not quite strong enough to do a lot of the forging that I'm trying to do with it. So I've upgraded the cylinder to a 5-inch bore cylinder, which is going to give me a whole lot more pressure, even though I'm using the same pump and motor setup. Um, another thing with this cylinder, it's way too tall. It's a 36-inch stroke, and I only use about 10 or 12 inches of that stroke. So I switched to a 12-inch stroke cylinder for the new one also. Um, I really didn't know what I was doing when I was buying this thing. I figured they were all kind of the same. And this huge cylinder showed up in the mail. Um, and I kind of had to make it work and make the I-beam a lot longer than necessary. So the other major problem I've been having with this press is the frame. It's just not designed very well. Um, it's kind of wobbly. It's not very sturdy. You can probably see in some of my videos the entire press shakes back and forth. Um, I had to bolt it into the concrete back there with Tapcon screws. And if you know anything about those, they don't work that well. Um, compared to anchor bolts or something, but I want to eliminate all that. Um, the foot pedal's okay, it just doesn't look that good, so I want to make that look a lot better. The switch is mounted in a stupid place, I have to reach all the way past the uh, entire frame to turn it on and off. So I'm going to fix all that with this new one and build it right once and for all. I almost forgot to tell you guys about the biggest issue I've been having with this press, and that's these dies right here. It's just not a good design. I tried to use angle to hold the dies in, um, and every time I use it, the angle gets bent and it clamps onto the dies, and then I have to use a hammer to knock the dies out. And also I use just bolts with some little tabs welded onto them to lock the dies in place. And the bolts bend, the tabs bend, they break off. It just doesn't work too well. So I need to totally redo all that and make sure it's right the next time. So this is most of the material I'm going to use for the hydraulic press. Um, some of it's actually for a swedge block stand, which is going to be an upcoming video. Um, but pretty much all of it is for the hydraulic press. This is the I-beam I'm going to be using. It's a W14 by 53, so it's really heavy. It's probably eight times heavier than the current I-beam I'm using. Um, it's going to be way stronger. It's not going to move at all, and that's why I got it. Um, in here, I have some thick one-inch plate, half-inch plate. Um, that's going to be for the dies and the, and the supports that I'm going to be welding onto the side of the beam. There's going to be a support up here with a hole in it that the top of the cylinder goes into. And then down here is going to be where the bottom die is, and that also needs to have supports underneath it that are going to be welded to the frame as well. Um, I'm, I don't think the I-beam is going to be quite this long when I'm done. I'm going to lay everything out, see how much space I need, and then probably trim off the bottom so it's not too tall, and then build a frame underneath it out of um, some more tube that I have in the back. And I might even get some sheet metal to cover up the frame so it looks a lot nicer in the end, but I'm not that far yet, so we'll see how that goes.
right guys, so it's the next day. I did a bunch of cutting with the torch yesterday, a little bit of milling, and also some welding later at night um, on this bottom die assembly. I guess they're doing construction next door, so it's a little bit loud. Um, but basically, I have everything laid out on top of this beam right now to show you guys and kind of give you guys a rough idea of how this press is going to go together. Um, all the pieces of plate right here are all one inch thick plate. Um, this top piece right here is going to be welded directly to the beam and I also need to drill a hole in it um, so I could use the pin that came with the cylinder to attach it. I need to drill another hole down here. I think it's an inch and a quarter hole. Um, this all needs to be welded together and I also need to build the guide system that's going to run along the I-beam to keep this thing in place. And down here I just have two pieces of one inch thick plate welded to these big triangular pieces of plate that I cut out. And this is all going to be welded um, with some pretty heavy beads to this beam as well. So this is the guide system right here that's going to run along the I-beam and that basically keeps the top die assembly in place as the press is operating. Um, so right here is an 11 by 12 inch piece of plate. I have um, 12 by 2 inch pieces of plate and then 12 by 3 inch pieces of plate. These actually should be one and a half because I need an 8 inch distance in between here because my flange is 8 inches wide. Um, but I'm basically going to kick those out and trim the edges 
And then also this plate needs to be the same thickness as the flange in order for this to work. And if it's a little thicker and you can't really match them up perfectly, you're going to have to mill down the top or bottom surface of this middle plate to make sure the fit is nice and tight. And then after I do all that and get it fitted up properly, I'm going to drill four holes in each side and put bolts through all three of these plates. So if I ever have to, I could take this assembly apart um, to, to fix it or adjust it in the future.
All right, guys, so it's been a couple of days since I last took some footage of this press build. I think I left you guys off um, where I was putting the entire top portion of the press onto the base. That was a complete disaster. Um, the engine crane I have couldn't lift the beam up high enough to get it on the base, so I had to trim the beam with the oxyacetylene torch. Then um, the legs of the engine crane just aren't wide enough to go around the base, so I had to put the entire base up on top of the legs. I had to drop the beam down, weld it, and then of course the entire thing is stuck up on top of the legs, so I had to lift it up, um, put blocks underneath each end, pull the legs out of the engine crane. And then with a tube sticking out of the engine crane and my dad hanging off the back, um, I inched down either side, took all the blocks out, got it back down on the wheels. Um, it was really sketchy, but everything worked out okay in the end. I'm definitely never going to do it like that again. Um, but since then, I painted the entire thing with a gray enamel paint. I think it's Rust-Oleum. And then I put all the mechanical components down in the bottom, like the pump, the motor, um, the valve, the reservoir, the filter. And all that is not as important as you might think. Well, the orientation of all those components isn't that important. Having all the proper components is very important. But the way you kind of orient them and install them isn't that important and it's going to change based on the design of your press um, and where you put the valve and where your foot pedal is going to go. As long as everything's connected with the proper hoses and connected the right way, you're fine. Um, but where you put them could change um, depending on your press build. Um, and also, like I said, I put a foot pedal on here. Um, some people like to put their valve up higher so they could use the, uh, the little hand lever that comes with the valve and a foot pedal. I never use the hand lever. I pretty much always use just the foot pedal. So I put the valve down lower so it's kind of out of the way. And I made a short little linkage down to a foot pedal that I made. It's pretty simple. Um, I'll go over that in, in just a second, but I'm pretty sure any of you guys can do exactly what I just did right here. I just want to give you guys a closer look at all the components that are underneath the, um, the base. I know it's kind of hard to see some of them. Um, I'm going to give you another angle in just a second. But basically what happens is you have your reservoir and then this big hose from the reservoir goes into your hydraulic pump. And the pump is actually powered by an electric motor and there's a linkage that connects the two of them together. Um, this is actually, these are all parts for a log splitter. So you could put either an electric engine or a gas engine onto this pump as long as the RPMs are the same. So obviously in this scenario, since I'm inside, I have an electric engine. So from the tank, you have the pump, and then from the pump, it goes up through this hose right here into the valve. And the valve basically um, determines which part of the cylinder the fluid is getting pumped to. So if you want the cylinder to go down, it'll pump the, the fluid in from the top of the cylinder. If you want it to go back up, it'll pump it in from the bottom. This is actually the bottom hose, and this is the top hose. Um, don't mix those up. It's going to be opposite then. I did that already. Um, I had to switch them, and fluid got everywhere. Um, but after it goes up into the cylinder, it comes back down one of these hoses. It comes out of the valve through this hose, which wraps around to here. And then it goes through your hydraulic filter, which I still haven't mounted anywhere yet. I need to find a good place to mount that thing. Um, since all my hoses are kind of short in here, it's kind of tricky, but I'll figure it out eventually. Um, it goes from the filter back into the reservoir. So it's, it's not too complicated as long as you get all the hoses and the fittings um, correct. It shouldn't be that bad. And also, here's the, um, the little linkage I made to the foot pedal. There's a little bit of slop in there, and that's just because of um, at the valve. It's not really designed that well, um, the connection up here. But there's nothing I can really do about that unless I redid all of that, which I may do in the future. Um, but then it's just a little piece of flat bar that goes down to this pedal that I made. It's a piece of plate with some expanded metal on there because sometimes just a regular piece of plate might get a little slippery. So I put this on the top, welded it down just for some extra grip. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. I know it, it might sound like a lot at first, but if you, if you take it slow and figure everything out and plan it all out, it shouldn't be too difficult. The only problem I had with this particular press was um, the cylinder didn't use the standard hydraulic fittings that you could get at like Napa. They used a different type of fitting, um, which actually used a gasket, because most of these standard fittings, the threads are tapered so that the more you thread it into like the valve, the tighter it gets. But the, um, the threads on the cylinder are not tapered and there's a gasket at the end. So I didn't know that. And I had to get special fittings at a hydraulic hose shop. But other than that, everything else worked out pretty much the way I thought it would. Um, and, and this is all stuff that I reused from my old press. 
Um, the motor and the pump was all pretty overpowered for the cylinder I had on the old press. So it was fine for me to transfer it to this new one, even though I got a much bigger cylinder. Um, and it's actually nice and slow and, and smooth. The other press I had was, it would, it would um, move up and down really fast, but it wasn't very powerful. That's because the bore of the cylinder was only, I think three inches or three and a half inches. So it moved really fast, but it wasn't very powerful. Where this press, it moves a little bit slower, but there's a lot more force behind it, which is much better for what I'm trying to do. The other thing I wanna go over with this press is this whole sliding mechanism right here. It might look kinda of complicated at first, but really it's pretty simple. Um, basically, I have this top die assembly welded to it. This is just two pieces of one inch thick plate. Um, it, they're welded perpendicularly to each other. Then this whole thing um, is welded to this plate right here, which is, it has to be longer than the flange, or wider than the flange of your I-beam. Um, I think this one is three inches wider, so there's an inch and a half extra on either side. Then there's a center plate here that's welded to this, and this is crucial. This needs to be the exact thickness of the flange of your I-beam. If you can't get something that's the exact thickness, um, you're probably gonna have to mill it down somehow, or maybe make a spacer out of some, some thinner piece of sheet metal or something, but it needs to be the exact thickness of the flange of your I-beam. Then there's another plate that gets bolted onto the back of that, which sandwiches the entire assembly around the flange, locking it on there, making sure it doesn't move anywhere. And now I just have four bolts. I think they might be half inch bolts. Um, it's really not crucial what size you use as long as they're strong enough. It's better to kind of overbuild things and over engineer things. Um, that's why I have this huge beam because the last beam I got was way too small. So it's better to just make things bigger and, and over engineered um, rather than kind of making them just strong enough. The very last thing I want to go over before we actually test out the press is the way the dies are attached to the press. So what I have here is a piece of half inch plate that's um, four inches by eight and a half inches. And this basically slides um, in this little channel that I made here with the half inch square bar. Um, it slides underneath this piece of half inch square bar which locks it down on this side. And then over here, I need to weld something to this bolt or maybe weld something to another piece of threaded rod that swings over and locks it down on this side. Um, I'm not sure how great this is gonna work out. I think it should be all right. I'll definitely let you guys know in the future whether it works out good or I need to change it. Um, but for now, this is what I'm gonna do. today's video. They supplied all the abrasives for this project and I'm going to leave a link to their website down in the description also and if you do buy anything from them I get a small kickback from that so make sure you check them out I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.